without question. Okay, so speaking of Kwame Torre, um, as you said, you've worked with him, um, my understanding is up until um, his um, passing. Yes, yes ma'am. I, I noticed like for me personally, like I remember in high school, college, I really never even like heard so much about Kwame Torre. And mm. it wasn't until probably when I was in law school and that's when I was more focused on, I guess, self-study. Mm -hmm. that I actually was like, wow, this person has a huge, huge presence in our history. And yet I, I, I it's crazy that like, I never really knew about him. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts as someone who's worked with him on the fact that, you know, to me, he, he should be mentioned with Malcolm Martin, like on that level. Uh, what are your thoughts on the fact that it's kind of like, I don't know who exactly, but it's like the history book made a, a intentional effort to ensure that we don't know that part of our history. Um, I, I think it's just, um, it's a microcosm of a broader, of a broader issue. Um, I think that, uh, like, for example, when we take a look at the civil and human rights movement, um, it's basically done through the lens of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And the analogy I would make is for those who have studied the history of the struggle to eradicate colonialism and the manifestation of apartheid in what's called South Africa, Azania, um, people know that struggle through the lens of Madiba Nelson Mandela and Winnie Mandela occasionally. So only when you go beyond the surface do you learn about the role of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, do you learn about the role of the Black Consciousness Movement of Azania and Azapo. In that same vein, um, only when people go beyond the surface do they understand the true contribution of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. In particular, um, they had five chairmen, I believe. Marion Barry's the first one, Chuck McDo is the second one, John Lewis is the third one, Brother Kwame's the fourth one, and Jamil Alameen, formerly known as H. Rab Brown, is the fifth one. But um, even when people come to focus on SNCC, they don't focus on Kwame and Brother Jamil's tenure. Um, so, and arguably, understandably so, um, because this is when Black, that generation, puts their spin on Black power. It's when that generation lets us know what our relationship to the US military should be dealing with the Vietnam War. It's that generation that lets us know how ruthless the FBI and CIA are. It's that generation that shows, it's during that tenure that we understand the immeasurable value of having an African united front. So it's about the issues and, and, and what have you. So that's the reason. Also, um, as we say often, um, and sometimes this gets us in trouble, but we have to speak the truth about ourselves to ourselves, is that we treat the 1960s like Christians treat the Garden of Eden, like it's the beginning of everything. So um, what that does is, so people know who Stokely Carmichael is, and then they focus on his eight year involvement in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. So they may not know much about um, his role in um, the Black Panther Party, the first one in Lowndes County, the second one when he was honorary prime minister for a year and a half, his um, 30 year um, campaign to build the all African People's Revolutionary Party and him being on the central committee of the Democratic Party of Guinea. So that part of it. And then um, also, it, I think it has a lot to do with the separation from how he articulated ideas to how he went about executing the ideas that he so passionately and eloquently articulated. And I think that that's where we are right now. We have to deal with the bastardization of methodology where people can articulate an idea, but if you ask them how to execute an idea, they don't have a clue in many instances. So that's the reason why there's so much confusion. And sometimes people can articulate an idea that they have no history at all of attempting to execute. So this is where we are right now, but it's a challenge. And that's one of the most beautiful characteristics of history itself is the challenges that it imposes on us. We either accept the challenges or avoid the challenges. We accept them.